Okay, so we've done the, the timer project, and let's uh, let's do a, a two timer project that has a, a, a flashing output. And sometimes we need an output like a lamp to flash on and off, and the RS Logics doesn't have a, a timer that's set up just for that, so we'll create one that does the same thing. So we'll we'll close this. We'll create a new project file. And a couple of blank lines. For this one I need two timers for sure, so I'm going to create a total of three. And I'm going to call this one TR1 and TR2. Okay, and I'll have just one input. We'll call it run. And of course I need some output, so let's have output. We'll call it uh, PL1 and PL2. Okay, PL1, PL2. I want to make sure that I didn't mess up there. Okay. Um, so I'm going to actually need a couple of lines, so let me add some more here. So this, this is an interesting circuit. So I'll have the run switch in here, and I'll have a timer. And then let me label this as I go so I don't get ahead of myself. Here's run and here's TR1. Okay, so we'll, we'll let this be a one second timer. Kind of slow. So when this timer is not uh, when this timer is finished I want the second one to start timing. So one timer kind of controls the next timer. So uh, let me drop that in here. And of course I need a, a done bit from the first timer. So TR1 done. And it's starting to get complicated because I have all these timers in here and all these bits that I'm worried about. And this is where I really need to have this on paper first so that I don't get all confused while I'm doing it. Um, let me verify that. See, I have a lot of errors in here because I have blank lines, so I'm going to close that. And I'm trying to get that done bit to pop up on that. Uh, and there it goes. Okay. And of course, this is TR2, so let me drop that over there. Okay. So, so far, so good, but when this timer turns on, I want it to reset the first one so that there, it's really unstable. So I'll put a not done here from this timer. So let me drop that in. Uh, TR2 not done. Okay, so it's it's an interesting circuit. Uh, I turn on the power. This one's not finished yet, so this timer starts. After a second, it's finished. This timer starts. After another second, this one turns on, which turns this off, and everything starts over. So there's a cycle to it. So we can call this a cycle timer. Uh, I can buy a cycle timer a couple hundred dollars, or I can just set up this logic and do the same thing. Okay, two outputs. I have output PL1 and PL2. So here's output PL1 and PL2. So what I'd like is whenever this first one turns on, I would like this PL1 to turn on. So I need a, an open contact, an on contact, and this right here will do it. Okay. And I'd like this lamp to be on when this lamp is not. So what I'll do is I'll put a knot here and I'll put that in its place. So if this lamp is, is off, this lamp needs to be on. So they're going to flash back and forth. Uh, and to make it more interesting, I guess, uh, see I don't want this lamp on all the time. So I need to say if, if the run switch is on, then I can let this work. So let's throw a few more contacts in here. And this kind of illustrates the nice thing about ladder logic is that if I make up, you know, if I change my mind, I can just go in there and throw some more contacts and I'm done. If I was hardwiring the circuit, I would have to go and rewire things, and I don't like to do that. It takes more time. Uh, so, so let's uh, verify this, and we'll go ahead and send it on its way. 
uh, system comms, the local download, and let me call this, uh, let's call it cycle timer. Cycle timer. So we use this this uh, this logic quite a bit. So just keep it handy in your notes, or just keep it in a file. You can always copy and paste. Um, the problem with copy paste is that if you have if you're already using tr or, or t4 colon one, and you paste another one in there, you'll cause problems. So maybe just keep it handy somewhere so you can just you know refer back to it. So there we go. Okay, so it's getting to be a problem because I don't have a lot of screen space. I'm going to shrink it just a little bit so I can see everything. So nothing's on right now. No lamps are on. I'll turn on run. Of course, this is on. See, it just takes off. So let me stop it again. And when I start it, let's, let's change this to a five-second delay. Okay. It's in run mode right now. And... Luckily, I can change timer presets while it's in run mode, so I don't have to stop and reload everything. So let's run it. One, two, three, four, five. This one's starting the time. Of course, this is done. Now it's reset again. So if we watch this timer done bit here, we might see it flash. But it happens so fast that we don't actually see it. So. Uh, this is a, f a cycle timer, and let me change the presets to something faster. Well, I'll have to go offline to do this, but uh, I can change the preset to a 0.1 or 0.01. So let's do that. Let's go offline. Save changes. Yeah, let's go ahead and save those changes. So I'd like a time base of 0.01. So 0.01 times 50 is 0.5. So it's a half second timer now. So let's verify that. And we'll send it back over. That's a little faster now. So if we have a flashing light, you know, we don't want to wait a second for it to flash, maybe a half second or a quarter second, uh, something to get your attention. And if I turn off the run switch, of course, everything blanks out. So it's a handy little routine, we'll call it, a subroutine or whatever, that we can throw into some ladder logic and make things flash. Uh, we can also use it on anything else, like a mixer, uh, a pump, anything that has to turn on and off periodically, we can use the same function for that. So we'll stop this and we'll uh, do something else.